file. I mean, we're we going to have them come back here in a month and do this again? No. I mean, usually when we have the people come back, they don't come back. It's just be a routine. Okay. Be a <laughs> that whole long okay. ceremony we don't have, to we have, have come every back. year. That's good. I'm yeah. That's fine. As long as the, the gentleman doesn't have to come back. I'm okay. okay, Mr. Prisco, hearing no other discussion. There's no expiration date on these coupons, right? <laughs> you know, he gives us a little menu Steve, with some coupons. You know, I just hate that throwing it for you. There's no iris in the audience. I know. That's all right. I'm a meat and potato guy. This is a little. Mr. Prisco. Mr. Chairman, I move to grant a common vehicular license to Geo's Pizza and Roast Beef, 6 Washington Street, to expire December 31st, 2011, subject to regulator all regulatory department requirements. Second. Motion by Mr. Prisco, second by Mr. O'Leary. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Welcome to town, and uh, best of luck. Just uh, so you know, we, we met with the uh, police, fire, and uh, emergency uh, services uh, at our last meeting, and uh, you know, we got a pretty good picture of uh, you know, what the town went through. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're curious about uh, what Reading Light ran into. Uh, there were a few little issues that we thought you know, should have been handled uh, a little quicker than they were. Of communication or just pure overload? Um, let me at the <coughs> start at the beginning. We, um, <coughs> we staffed up on Saturday. We had meetings the week before the storm. Uh, we knew we were getting wet, heavy snow. Um, I don't think we thought that the damage and destruction that occurred was going to occur. We knew we were going to get something uh, that was going to cause some outages in the system. We had crews in on Saturday, personnel in on Saturday. We got our first call, uh, I believe it's seven o'clock on Saturday evening, six or seven o'clock on Saturday evening. And this storm was, um, a matter of miles made a big difference in this storm. Uh, the, 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 the cities and towns on the eastern side of the storm, which just got rain, didn't really have any problems at all. As you went farther west, there was more outages, more severe outages. I know to the east of uh, our service territory in Wakefield, Middleton, Danvers, they really had maybe about a day's worth of work or so, maybe 30, 30 hours to put their systems back. We were out from, we had customers out from Saturday night at six or seven o'clock, our first call till Wednesday evening, we got everybody back. Um, all other than customers that needed electricians work on their services. Um, at the height, I believe we had probably about 7,000 customers out. But a lot of that, uh, out of 28,000 we have in the system. Um, a good portion of those customers were on feeders that we got back pretty quickly, within an hour or so. Um, free damage, it was basically 100% free damage. Everything from limbs coming and hitting services to um, trees taking out feeders. Um, we worked through the night on Saturday into Sunday. Um, Sunday night, the, the um, crews rested until early Monday morning. We got uh, mutual aid relief from uh, Marblehead, Danvers, Middleton, Taunton. Um, we had uh, three crews in from um, northern New England. We had four tree crews. We had um, electricians to do services from a contractor that worked for us. So we got, uh, we got mutual aid quickly. We got... Um, the help we thought we needed to get the system back. Um, not as quickly as we wanted, but uh, on Monday morning, my message to the customers through customer service was that if you're out of power now, be prepared to be out till Thursday afternoon or Thursday evening. As it turned out, we got everybody back on Wednesday evening. Um, with respect to communications, uh, communication
communications is always uh, difficult because the nature of the, the outages are that people don't have electricity. The, um, what, I, uh, what I did on Monday morning was put together lists for each of the towns of the area outages for each of the uh, towns that we served. We served four towns, Winfield, North Reading, Reading, and Wilmington. We sent updates twice a day to each one of the towns with their particular um, area outage list. Um, I brought, I brought uh, the list with me. Um, I don't know if Greg had shared them. I, I sent it to the town managers and said, share the list with whoever you need to, to share it with. Um, at the, the first update that we did, we had 28 area outages in North Reading. Um, from uh, Sunday evening through Tuesday, when we got the area outages cleaned up, there were at least two crews in North Reading working continuously. Um, we had crews throughout the service territory. I would say that the damage was probably a little more severe in Linfield at the beginning of the storm. But um, we, we had crews in all four towns working. The, um, the updates that I talked about uh, came out at noontime and I believe 7 o'clock at night. Um, what we did is we, 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 we had kind of a matrix that said, here's what we've completed between 12, uh, the noontime update and the 7 o'clock update. Then the next day we'd send out a 12 o'clock update and we'd have what they completed between the, the night before and uh, the, 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 the next day's 12 o'clock update. The crews worked 7 till midnight, 7 in the morning till midnight, and um, then they rested 7 hours. We had hotels for some of the crews and uh, some of the RMLD crews just slept at the, our, our offices in Main Street and Reading. Um, <coughs> we, when we restore power, it, it goes in a fashion that we restore the feeder outages first, um, along with public safety, schools, um, senior centers, things like that. The, uh, the second thing we restore after those things are all done, and police and fire too, is we'll, we'll restore laterals that are um, lines off the, off the main feeders, and then once the laterals are all done, then we'll re restore the services at the individual houses. Um, I, I, uh, if, if I've missed anything, kind of talk real quickly about it. There were a couple of questions. Uh, one was, uh, and, and I gather was just a result of timing. Greg initially in the storm, I think, had reported, I don't remember the number, but it was uh, 108 homes mm -hmm. that were without power. And then shortly thereafter, it went up to 500. So I don't know whether that was a, a communication issue or you're just getting started and have a full inventory of uh, the full scope of the problem. You've got a pretty good grasp on it. And starting up, trying to get people out there to assess what the uh, problems are. Um, when, when you get a phone call for an, uh, areas that people are calling in, and you get, a f you, you get phone calls, you say, okay, um, just to take, excuse me, just to take example, um, up on Central Street. We had a particularly bad situation up in Central Street. We try to diagnose what we think is wrong just from the phone calls coming in and what people are telling us. Once we get up there, then we find out that the damage is maybe more severe than, than we thought. So when you have area outages, what we think is happening out there from the phone calls until we get a runner out there to say, okay, we got this street plus four other streets that are attached to it that are out. So it is a timing issue. Monday morning, we had a pretty good handle on what what the what the count was for each one of the outages, and that's when we were able to start yeah, sending the I updates think to the town. At that point, we were getting information that showed numbers going down. The other thing that uh, bothered me quite a bit was there was a tree down that was blocking one complete lane of Park Street between Route 28 and 62. Yeah, okay, I got you. And yep. I, I went by that several DPW times. DPW yeah. wouldn't move it because there were wires entangled in the tree. Yeah, the words were it wasn't uh, fit. Uh, what was it? Uh, de energized, I believe. They weren't de energized? I, I know, um, yeah, I, I know where you were talking because I went by that tree. There were cones there. Yeah, I think yeah, there were a bunch cones. of cones up, but Pumping. it was, yeah. it was yeah. down and blocking a main access way. Mm 
Mm-hmm. I know all of one day. Yeah, it was Sunday to hours. Tuesday. Yeah. Sunday to about noontime yeah. on Tuesday. Yeah. I, I'll have to get back to you and check on that because um, I did go by there and I didn't know if we had a major route. It might have been a service that was down, but I don't I don't recall that there was wires in that. I, I street, but I'll, I, I'll check on that. I, think I, was I don't think the house that it was connected to, the wires were connected to, ever lost service. But the wires were entangled in the tree when it came and down. And DPW wouldn't move the tree as a result. But maybe and that's why you didn't know about it because there was no outage. Well, when we were talking with the chiefs, part of what I got out of it was that uh, you know the people were pulled in all different directions, and there may have been another outage, another tree down on Park Street, or even further along. Thought that you had taken care of it. No, you had. You no, know, no, it, it was taken care of, but another that one was fell taken, down. No, that one was taken care of, but I think this one was still down because this one was down at 6:30 that right. Sunday morning. Oh, yeah. uh, well, Monday morning for sure, but then it's Monday Tuesday I should say. But uh, so there's a. What we were concerned about was the communication between, you know, our public safety and, and your office uh, to meet the immediate needs from a public safety and also standpoint, which you know may take you off of your game plan. You know, how do you normally react to that sort of stuff? I guess. Um, if if there's if there's an access issue, and <coughs> we have to get out there for the wires, we're, we're going to try to do that. We want to get out there because uh, obviously, if there's an access issue to a main road, we, we need to address that. So how, how does that happen? Does that come from Greg? Does he have to notify you as a priority or as a DPW director? A lot of the times, we get it from either fire or police. Um, unless we get out there to assess and we say, oh, we got some well, wires tangled in a tree, but a lot of times we get it from fire and police. Well, at some point, I think what we'd like you to do is, before the winter comes again, uh, is may, maybe get, get some sort of a protocol uh, so when things are prioritized from our local standpoint through public safety, it can be communicated to your group as far as a prioritization of what you want to be doing. Uh, and I don't know how it works now, other than, you know, it works very, works very well. But mm -hmm. things like we have these little misfires once in a while. And uh, so if we can eliminate that by having some sort of an understanding between your department how you how you would see it best working? We need the input. I think when we we tried something a little bit different during Hurricane Irene, um, we had phone numbers designated for each one of the towns that would get to somebody inside. I think uh, Greg, you remember that, and and I think it worked pretty effectively because you the, the fire police Greg and I told them whoever he wants to to give it to. We wanted to make sure that the residents weren't calling that number because we wanted to keep it open. But that, that worked out pretty well for all four towns. They had access in that they could talk to somebody right there and they could, they could relay that because we have 25 lines coming into the Isle of Valdez. And that tells us not enough, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when 3,000 people are trying to get in on 25, and we, we message, uh, we, we, we have messages on the lines for the people that can't get through to a, to a, to a, 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 a live person. Um, and, you know, sometimes the message satisfies people, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes they just want to hang on and, and talk to somebody. But while that's going on, the police and fire really need a conduit to get into the RMLD. And what we set up during Hurricane Irene worked, and we, we kind of set that up. We tried to set that up again because the storm, quite frankly, got ahead of us. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because when we had a discussion, we had set up for Hurricane Irene in the Emergency Management Center, and we didn't do it for the snowstorm. Mm -hmm. well, well, normally we wouldn't do it for a snowstorm. No, but Still this open. was, you know, uh, you can't say this came without warning. Oh, no, it didn't. It, it's, like I said, we staffed for it. We just didn't staff for the damage that actually occurred. Okay. Um, one of the things that I noticed, I, I started to did keep a running list of the streets. And at one point, I think it was actually on Monday, I noticed one or two streets were on your list. So I actually ended up calling in. Uh, Kings Row, for example, was one of the streets that wasn't on your list. So was it true that if a, a resident from that street doesn't call you, you don't know that street's out? No, when, when we sent the emails out, um, one of the things that um, we, we, we put on the email 